G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, regular viewers will know that I'm a big fan of collets. ER32s in this case. And you can see it's, it's all had a, a lot of use. And I also suspect that 90% 90, 90 of my viewers probably don't use collets. They probably see them as being high-end tooling that, you know, and the experts will use, or industry, but that couldn't be further from the truth. And if you do use collets, yes, they can be super accurate, but they can also be inaccurate if used incorrectly. Now, you think, oh, you know, how difficult can it be? Well, there's a few tricks to know. And I had a comment the other day from a guy who bought a set of collets from Banggood, and said, you know, that to uh, improve the accuracy substantially by just putting the work halfway through the collet. And I knew straight away that that wasn't the way it works because EA yeah, collets are designed to be pulled up equally over their full length. That's why they're slit from both directions. They're different to uh, any other sort of collet. And uh, if you put your work in halfway, well, only half the collet's going to compress properly. The other half won't. So that means your accuracy is going to go to pot. So anyway, I wrote back and said, look, that was coincidence that you got that to happen. Obviously, there's some sort of compensating errors going on there. And that's not how it works. So I'll give you a bit of a look at how this happens, what to consider, and yeah, you know how to use them correctly. So let's move on. To demonstrate what I'm saying, I've put a, a an accurate rod in the uh, the ER chuck. I've got the indicator test indicator tip thirty five mill out from the chuck so any error that is there from radial uh, and axial run out should show up quite quite clearly so we'll rotate the the job the test piece and you can see the run out is Minimal. <laughs> this is a uh, 90 year old lathe, but it's, in, it's accurate, it's in good condition. It's, a short, it's an old short blend. So you can see that that is really pretty good accuracy. Totally acceptable. Now, that test piece is in the full length of the chuck. Okay, so this is the same distance out. 35 mil, but we've put a go job only uh, only half the length of the collet. Check this run out. That's pretty massive. That's pretty massive. Now I can improve that by centering the test piece in the tail stock before I tighten up the collet. That will help too square things up a bit you know the whole thing is that the collet is going to be distorted and you can compensate a number of ways for that so I'll center it with the tail stock and we'll see if we can get any improvement all right so I've left it centered now we'll try it and you can see that's improved things somewhat but you've still got distortion of the workpiece. Okay, so that's the radial run out in that position. Now, what about axial? Is there, is there any axial? Well, I'll, uh, I'll move in the, the test indicator closer to the chuck and we'll see if we get any improvement.
All right, now we'll try it. And now it's going the other way. So you can see that you've got actual run out as well. It's not just radial run out, which is exactly what you would expect to happen. The, uh, the whole point is that if you measure your collet and how it's holding the work, it's no good just measuring it in one position. You must measure it in several positions because, OK, you might just get it lucky, as I think this guy did, that uh, emailed me, or commented to me, that you just happened to get a spot that where the, uh, the errors are basically nullify each other and it looks good. But when you move out further, you'll find that the workpiece is just, it's transcribing a, a cone the way it rotates. It's better here, worse out here, because any error will be magnified the further you get away from the chuck. So there you go. Just to prove that uh, I'm not talking complete bullshit, I'll run the shaft right through again and we'll repeat this, this part of the exercise. Okay, so now we're full length of the collet once again. And I've used the tail stop to, sit, to keep it centred. Well, not that it's really necessary, but it all helps, I suppose. So it, it, this is the exact same set as we, set up as we had last time. And let's look at the, the run out. Very little run out. Extremely small, which is how it should be. Okay, did I just get lucky? No, I didn't. I'll move out now, 35 mil out again, and we should get very close to that reading once again. Okay, what have we got? A little bit more error than I had on the first attempt. But on the first attempt, I didn't have the tail stock connected. So, you know, you're always going to get some sort of compensating errors or accumulative errors in your setup. And I'm just showing you how the compression aspect of the collet will vary in line with the, the length of the job in the collet. But there are other things that can vary as well the actual um, position of the collet in the chuck itself can be another error factor and you can have compensating or compounding errors in there as well. You know, you can, you'll find that if you rotate the, the collet in the chuck, there'll be one position that it will be better than anywhere else and there'll be another position where it'll be a hell of a lot worse. So in one position, the errors will compensate, they'll nullify each other. And in the other position, which will be directly opposite, the, the collet will compound the errors between them with itself and the, and the chuck. So, you know, you've got to realise there's always going to be some small error in budget priced equipment. And how you choose to use it determines the accuracy. OK, so... There, that's a tip from me. Make sure your work goes fully through. If it can't go fully through the collet, put another piece of work on the other end of the collet to uh, try and you know, keep the compression equal and uh, just, a, just a spacer of some sort of the same diameter. And yes, if you want to get your accurate, accuracy as high as possible, if you've got a um, an error in your readout, rotate your collet in your collet chuck, take some measurements and go for the best result. Okay, well that's it from me. I hope you found it interesting. A lot of people don't understand this. They just think, oh, you know, it won't make much difference. No, it does. It makes a huge difference. And, yeah, you get out of this what you put in. So spend a bit of time measuring and setting it up correctly and you'll get the best possible result. Okay.
That's all for now. See you next time. Cheers.